what are cases? <laughs> How do I learn that? What's the point in learning them? Why would I learn them? Will I ever learn them? Do you really use all the cases properly? These are some of the common questions I get as a uh, Serbian teacher. Um, and today, I want to tell you what cases are from the practical perspective, and I will give you some tips and tricks to help you handle this, as I call it, seven-headed grammar monster, which is not a monster, as you will see. Okay, um, about a year ago, I wrote an article on my blog about what cases are and how to learn them. And I've noticed that this article is actually gaining popularity. Well, people are, are reading it. So I decided to make a, a YouTube video on the same topic, you know, to help to give more uh, information about that. Now, as I said, um, if you speak another Slavic language, Russian, Polish, Slovak, or any other uh, Slavic language except for Bulgarian and Macedonian, because Bulgarian and Macedonian are the only languages, uh, the only Slavic languages that don't have cases. If you speak a Slavic language except for these two, you know what cases are, you use them uh, in your native language um, every day. But you probably have some difficulty to paste the Serbian grammar over your uh, other Slavic language grammar. Uh, that's your uh, task. I mean, you just need to, to change your native language grammar to use the Serbian language grammar. I, I often have my Russian or um, uh, students using simply Russian grammar because it comes naturally. They use the, the Russian endings. That's why I'm saying this. That's your task, to, to paste the Serbian grammar over your other Slavic language grammar. Okay. Now, if you know a language with um, uh, some kind of case system, like uh, Greek or German, believe it or not, Greek and German languages have similar case system. They mostly decline articles, and they have four cases, and they decline mostly articles a, a less less they decline nouns and adjectives. So if you're Greek or, or German, uh, you know what cases are, but you need to add some more data to your knowledge of the cases. If you learned Latin, <laughs> you definitely know what cases are, but you definitely don't know how to learn them and how to effectively use them <laughs> in, uh, in a language that you speak. Um, Latin, the Latin language also has, uh, I don't know, seven cases, I suppose. I, I forgot about that. I think seven or six cases. I'm not sure at, at this moment. Um, but, you know, I learned Latin in high school for two years. And I, I had, I knew it. I was good at Latin. <laughs> but I always had a little cheat sheet with the case endings for Latin. You know, I just hated uh, to learn them by heart. You know, when you learn Latin, it's, an, it's a dead language. No, we don't speak it in school. Uh, so we learn to decline nouns. Puella, puellum, puelle, and so on. You need to decline all the nouns. So if you learned Latin, maybe you want to forget how you learned an inflected language. That's not the way you're going to learn the Serbian cases. But... If you only know languages without cases, uh, if the English language is your only language, uh, which is often the case with my students, you might have some trouble understanding what cases are, what is it, why do words change? And this video is specifically good for you to understand what cases are. All right, so now for all of you who speak only English or another language that doesn't have cases, I want to explain to you what cases are based on your knowledge of the English language. The English language has some remnants of the case system uh, in the pronouns. So, for example, uh, if you say, I love them, 
I is the subject of your sentence. I love is the verb. And them is the object. If you want to change, to put them in the in the position of the subject, you will have to say they love me. So your them uh, from the object needs to change to they when it's subject, because otherwise, uh, them love I would still mean the the first what the first sentence said, right? I love them. Them love I. I mean, it's just a weird word order, but it still means the same. So you have to say, they love me. You use they for the subject and me for the object. Or you use I for the subject and, and uh, me for the object. So uh, they and I are your nominative case. That's the subject of the sentence. And them and me is the object of your sentence. So these are the accusative case in Serbian. But the fun thing in, in Serbian is that we do this for all pronouns, for all nouns, and all adjectives. Okay? What we did here in the English uh, sentence, I love them and they love me. We changed they to them and I to me when we changed from subject to object, that's what we do with um, all pronouns, all adjectives, and all nouns in the Serbian language. Okay. Now, you have an option. Um, you can just ignore the cases and speak Tarzan Serbian, you know? <laughs> People will mostly, mostly understand you when you ask for basic things. And you can just learn vocabulary and compose sentences like that, the Tarzan way. However, that won't take you far. Because you, uh, you need cases to understand more complex sentences. If you don't learn the cases, you won't be able to read or to listen to any advanced conversation. That's why cases are important. Um, let me try and explain you from the, um, uh, the practical perspective what cases are. My son is now three years old and he uses all the cases. You know, um, he rarely makes a mistake in terms of cases. Sometimes he will use maybe a wrong ending, but for the right case. Sometimes he will generalize the rule to an exception, uh, but he will use the right cases. And when he was about two years old, learning and starting to speak Serbian, I, I watched him closely. And that was a revelation for me, the way he learned how to use cases. His first words were nouns without prepositions. Prepositions came after. He first used nouns only, but in cases. First, he would say, mame, mame, mame. That's short for, hoću da idem kod mame. I want to go to mama. He wouldn't, he wouldn't say, kod mama. No, he would use only the genitive case, mame. And we knew what it meant, okay? We knew his mama in genitive, mame. We knew that it meant, I want to go to mama. Hoću da idem kod mame. Hoću kod mame. Uh, he would also say, mm, mamom, instrumental. Mamom, which means with mama. He wouldn't say sa mama. No, he didn't use prepositions, but he used the right ending uh, for the for the noun mama mamom is the instrumental and he used it to say with mama i want to go with mommy so this is what cases are even in the in the brain of a two-year-old child learning how to speak his first words the cases bear meanings that's why they're important you have an option and I will tell you I met some people 
uh, who spoke fluentish Serbian and who actually learned how to mask the endings of the words. You know, they, they spoke uh, fluently, kind of fluently and quickly, and they would, you couldn't hear their endings. <laughs> you couldn't hear their endings clearly. And being a Serbian, your mind just fills it up with the, the ending that you're uh, expecting to hear. You know, you so probably most people won't even notice that they're, uh, uh, you know, hiding the ending. And that's probably a good thing to do. Because if you know the word, when you when you start to speak, to speak Serbian, if you know the word that you want to use in your Serbian sentence, and you're unsure about the ending, it's probably better to say that word, even with the wrong ending, or just, you know, leave the ending blank, but say it. Because if, you, if you're silent, uh, the other person that listens to you will think that you don't know the word. They won't guess that you don't know the meaning. So say the word. Say it with the wrong ending. Uh, but say it. You can just mask the end of the word. Or the other person will help you finish uh, your word with the right ending. Okay. Um, anyway, my advice is to learn the cases. And I'm going to tell you how to do it, what is the best way to do it. Uh, obviously, I don't advocate learning the uh, the patterns fr from start, you know, to take one word and to change it through all the cases, to learn all the cases uh, when you start. No, that's not how you learn to use efficiently the Serbian cases. But uh, first, let me tell you... Uh, the secrets about the Serbian case system. I have three three secrets to reveal to you. Some of you or ma many of you are usually horrified when they learn that we have seven cases. And we do. There are seven cases. But there's one thing you need to know. Dative and locative are actually the same. Uh, the difference between dative and locative case disappeared long time ago. And I believe that in, um, for the sake of teaching Serbian as a foreign language, uh, we would be more efficient to teach them as dative locative. You know, uh, the difference between I, I got a question uh, in the event on the Facebook about uh, to talk about the difference between dative and locative. Is there any difference? The, yes, there is a difference. The difference between dative and locative are their functions, Why, how we use them, for what purposes we use them. That's the biggest difference be, uh, between them. And there is one practical difference uh, in the pronouns. The differences in the pronouns um, is that the dative case has both short and long forms of the uh, pronouns, many and me, both, lo both the long form many and the short form me, meaning to me. The locative case only has the long forms, but that's the logical thing. And it's caused by the fact that the locative case uh, is used only and only with the prepositions. And with the prepositions, we only use the, uh, the long forms of the, of the pronouns. So, but that's, this is actually a, a more advanced, for more advanced students, not for total beginners, this info. If you're a total beginner, just know that dative and locative are the same. Learn them as dative and locative. That's the first secret. Dative and locative are the same. The second secret is that Instrumental plural uh, is the same as dative and locative together. Okay, so if dative and locative are the same and instrumental is the same as their plural, you basically have four and a half cases to learn. Four and a half. Why four and a half? I'm missing one. That's the third secret. <laughs> the one that I'm missing is the vocative case. This vocative case, you don't have to learn at all. You just need to know that there is such a thing 
vocative case, which is used only to address people or to invoke gods, for example, invoke, voke, vocare, vocative. That's why it's called vocative for calling or addressing people. So it's practically useless. And um, in many situations, uh, it shows signs that it started disappearing. It started diminishing in many cases. Mm. In Croatia, there is even a dialect that doesn't use vocative at all. They just use the nominative case instead of vocative. So just know that there is a vocative case, but it's not really crucial. And especially it's not important uh, at start to, uh, to, to learn it in your first year. You don't need it. Okay, so th these are three uh, secrets that, uh, that leave, leave us with uh, four and a half sets of case endings you need to remember and to learn. So how to learn these four and a half cases? Little by little and one, one by one. When you start learning Serbian, first you must learn the nominative case. The nominative case uh, is for the names, to list things, or to use, uh, it's used only as a subject of a sentence, or, for example, to list words in a dictionary or in any kind of a list. Uh, so the first thing you learn is the nominative case. You learn to recognize genders and uh, singular or plural in the nominative case. That's what you, all of you have learned, uh, I suppose, if, you, if you're here. Then uh, from there, you, you're learning accusative. That's your next case. Because the first uh, sentences you make are the subject-object sentences. Subject does something to an object. So you need nominative for the, for the subject and uh, accusative for the, for the object. Um, the fun thing about Serbian is that we can uh, change the word order in a sentence exactly thanks to the cases and the, ca the, the word endings, right? We use word endings to indicate the case. So we can say, um, Anna voli Petra. Anna voli Petra. Anna loves Peter. Anna voli Petra. Or I can say, Petra voli Anna. The meaning didn't change, just the emphasis. To change the meaning, I need to change the cases. I need to put Peter in accusative, or, or rather, I need to put the Peter in the nominative case and Anna in the accusative case. Petar voli Anu. Anu voli Petar. So these are the two cases you need to master. Now, uh, when, you, when you learn a new case, there, it's a process. First, you get acquainted with the case. Uh, you learn only the endings uh, for the nouns, right? Uh, you learn th that that uh, in the accusative case, you learn that you need to which uh, nouns you need to change and which remain the same as in the nominative case. Because half, if you if you draw a table, I always draw tables. If you draw a table, you will see that there there is a half of the table that remains the same as the nominative case. Uh, so you need to learn the masculine gender, which weirdly makes difference uh, between uh, animate and inanimate, or between things and people and animals. Uh, that's the fun thing. And the good thing to know is that it only happens in the accusative case in masculine gender singular, this uh, distinction between animate, inanimate. Uh, people and animals are animate and uh, things are inanimate. I always say this because I used to say only animate, inanimate, and then people would ask me, and what about plants? Are people, are plants uh, animate or inanimate? No, uh, in terms of language, um, plants are inanimate. Okay. Um, you need to learn categories. So first, when you learn uh, the accusative case, you, you got acquainted with these endings. Then you add adjectives. You also need to learn the adjectives. Then you need uh, to write or to say as many examples as you can think of 
or if you have if you're lucky with a teacher the teacher will give you these examples um so practice masculine gender animate 10 examples okay imam dobrog frizera znam jednog čoveka imam jednog sina in the same category masculine gender animate 10 examples 20 examples only there because you need to uh, to get used to using that case that's the thing you can see the 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 pattern you can see the table with the endings you can memorize the table with the endings but you need to help your mind um you know do this switch so give him plenty of examples to work with practice 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 10 20 30 examples as many as you can think of in one category only masculine gender a singular uh animate people and animals then change that to plural again all these examples all these 10 20 30 examples change them to plural and it's exhausting i know i had a student doing like this oh i i i feel i feel my synapses growing i feel my brain growing when i'm doing this exercise yeah and that's and that's that's exactly what's happening when you do this exercise your brain is growing your brain is creating new synapses uh once you are so familiar you feel confident with the accusative case with all these changes and all these switches while you're doing this you're building vocabulary of course because you need vocabulary to practice all these grammar only then you can add another case that's most the most important advice i can give you when you're comfortable with one case learn it in as many um examples as you can as you can in as many functions as you can only then move on to another case and then do the same thing you know practice them separately only nominative first only accusative first then you will go either to locative or to genitive practice only that when you're confident with using them separately then you can start combining them <clears throat> that's my advice <laughs> about how to learn the cases you need to do it uh, step by step category by category uh, it's a process it's a long-lasting process but that's the only way you will uh, learn teach actually you will teach your brain to work that way okay uh this is also how i teach i teach in my classes like that and i teach uh, in my in my course uh the tak polak opinion course i actually have only uh four cases there the tak polak beginner which is the beginner serbian course i start with the nominative case that i get acquainted with the genitive case just to say where is someone from where are you from and with some prepositions and then i do accusative in detail and probably i could add even more more exercises for accusative in that course and i will i uh, probably will more accusative more accusative more of the same um and then i go to locative also more the same more of the same <laughs> uh, only in that way you will learn uh when you cover all these cases like that separately only then i would suggest you to go uh to overview them and to learn to change one noun through different cases only then so it's a process that takes time all right uh i think i've i've more or less told you everything i planned to to tell you uh today about the cases hmm? um can you tell me how many cases did you learn did you learn the cases the serbian cases which one is the most difficult one how did you learn them did you have any strategies to share with us hmm? Sarah learned them all. I know. Uh, Sarah, how long have you been learning Serbian? 
I think a few a few years, at least five years, as I know. You learn the boring way. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the textbook way, the boring way. Mm -hmm. On and off for four years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the first year, uh, oh, let, let's let's start with the in the in the first um, six months. Let's say in the first six months, you can be satisfied if you learn only nominative and accusative, and maybe one more case in the in the. <laughs> Okay, I have a, 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 a comment auf Deutsch <laughs> für mich. Liebe Magdalena, vielen Dank für Ihre Erklärungen. <laughs> And I don't know how to say you're welcome in German. Uh, wait, wait, maybe I remember. Mm -hmm. I can't, I don't know. Henning, you have to learn me this. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, It's so similar with Russian, but endings are sometimes different. What's confusing? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, um, gern geschehen. Gern geschehen. Ah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> gern geschehen. <laughs> Vielen Dank. Gern geschehen. Okay. <laughs> um, Katrina says, it's so similar with Russian, but endings are sometimes different. And that's confusing. Yeah. Uh, that is a problem. So if you know a Slavic language, uh, you will easily start understanding Serbian. And with, a, with people who already speak a Slavic language, in my classes, I start speaking Serbian from the very beginning. But for them, it's so similar that it's, very, it's difficult to escape the Russian grammar or um, the, their native Slavic language grammar. And uh, the endings are somewhat sometimes they're the same but mostly they're different and that's that's confusing that's the problem yeah i know i know katrina znam mm -hmm. sometimes serbian takes a case that german doesn't that's true and serbian has more cases uh, it's also true uh, uh, about the prepositions you know cases are uh, to be learned together with the prepositions because one preposition with uh, different cases can mean different thing. As you probably learned with uh, accusative and locative, we use the same prepositions. For example, u Beograd, u accusative, u Beograd, ili u Beogradu, with locative, u Beogradu. U with accusative means I'm going to Belgrade, And U with locative means in Belgrade. It's located in. So prepositions, you have to learn prepositions with the cases. Uh, prepositions and the cases together create meanings. Sometimes uh, one preposition will always take one case. But sometimes one preposition can take different cases and change meaning. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, Yvonne says, it is very helpful to find a Serb in your area for regular practice, definitely, speaking from experience. Cases are much more fun over a cup of coffee. <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah, that's what comes next. <laughs> yeah, first you need to do some work alone, then you can move on to, to practice with, with someone to be more efficient, you know, you need to do some work at home some studying and learning, and then you can have fun with the uh, chatting with people to, and be efficient with it, to do it efficiently. Yeah. Um, prepositions are different in every language. So when we, we learn prepositions, um, there is a direct translation. For example, u, if you, u means in, that's the direct translation of u. Uh, voda je u čaši. Water is in the glass. Voda je u čaši. That's the direct translation. But then, in other contexts, u will be translated as at um, or on or whatever. You know, it can. It's it's not always. So uh, prepositions um, are something you learn how to use in a language. 
you learn their their uh, literal meaning, and then you, you you learn the usage, how to use them, because it's different in every language. You cannot rely on direct translations. You need to know how to use a certain preposition in certain language. Okay. Uh, if you don't have other questions, I'm sorry, but today I, I actually I have flu. Uh, I know I I appointed this uh, uh, talk for today, uh, and then I I I went down with a flu on uh, in uh, Friday night. Friday night I couldn't sleep. Uh, Saturday night I it was bad. I, I slept badly and you know so luckily I have some medicines that help me survive so I apologize today I'm not at my best because of the flu but I think mo more or less I did what I planned to to tell you anyways okay can you please recommend your favorite textbooks for self-learning hmm that's a difficult question really um, I can tell you, uh, Katrina, you can send me an email and I will share my, my library with you. I will, I will give you the books that I have in PDF um, and you can choose something for yourself. Uh, I'm, but you're, if, if I'm not, if I'm remembered correctly, you're Russian. Um, so your best way probably is to use I don't know. Send me an email, and I will. I will. Uh, I will reply. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, dobro. Hvala vam da se da se oprostimo na srpskom. To say goodbye in Serbian. Da se oprostimo na srpskom. Može. Naravno, hvala vam što me pratite. Hvala vam što ste tu. Uh, I, uh, uh, I have something in, in pot, I have something cooking for you, I hope you will like it, but expect from me some new things going on on the Serbian Courses channel, I will let you know soon, hopefully uh, next Monday you might expect some good news from me uh, about a new project I'm working on, okay? Hvala vam, puno vam hvala, čujemo se i vidimo se, tu smo, ciao. Ciao, ciao.